Hello esteemed televiewers, it's another beautiful Sunday for us to talk to another icon. This is Iconic Moments with Melvis Touch. My name is Melvis Touch and today we are going to be talking to a big hand in CFI. Someone that has the credit for directing some of the biggest, if not most, of the biggest movies that we have in 237 Cinema. As a matter of fact, he is not only a director, he is a writer and a, and a producer as well. And thanks to his creativity, he has been able to dine with some of the creative big hands, both in and out of Cameroon. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we welcome the indomitable Anna John Scott. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. It's Thank you so, so much. It's so, yeah. so, so amazing to have you. It's a pleasure. Yes. Being here especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. I've watched you online. I've Aww. watched some of your amazing stuff. Thank you so, so much, sir. It's my pleasure. Yeah, we, we've always looked forward to, to having Anna John Scott. But then the proximity and all of that, we thought that would happen maybe sometime in the future. But then as God has it, you're here today. And we are also going to be talking about the reason why he is in Yaoundé. But first, let's start uh, with your debut in movie making. Yeah. You will start in 2011. Mm, nah. Okay. 26, Ooh. 2006. Okay. Yeah, that's when I started mm -hmm. movies, but not writing. I started up writing from my mother's kitchen. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because there was this grandma has this tenden, uh, had this tendency of gathering us and telling us stories. Mm -hmm. I used to be her favorite listener. Mm. Yeah. So when she died, my mother continued with it. Yeah. And then I saw myself imitating her my fellow friends, students in mm -hmm. school, and that's why I was uh, always uh, good, very good with uh, compositions and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Yeah, she had kept something deep in me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something I will forever remember her for. And then I decided to get into films in 2006 when I finished university. Oh, yeah. right after university? Yeah, right after university. So that was very intentional. Yeah, that's when I met uh, some f some guys in Limbe. Mm -hmm. I met Ngala, I met uh, Proxy. Of course, he's my pal from the... I wrote The Fisherman's Diary with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I met uh, Desmond White. Oh. met uh, uh, T. Reagan, and then we decided to form a small group mm -hmm. called Good Age Entertainment. Mm -hmm. From then, we started the journey. Yes, the journey has not been easy. But it's been fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the beautiful part of the journey are the difficult parts, especially. Yeah, yeah so here we are. Right. So what will account for picking, directing, or movie making generally as a, as a career? You, you studied what in the university? Economics. Oh, okay. The University of Yaoundé too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, then it, right after university, you pick a career in movie making? Yeah. What, why that choice? I think uh, it was a gross mistake. Oh, yeah, a beautiful it was, one. It was a gross, a gross beautiful mistake. <laughs> when I, before leaving uh, uh, Swa, mm -hmm. I had written a script titled The Game of Aces. Mm -hmm. It was an amazing script, at least to me. And to a few people who read it, mm -hmm. they were like, wow, this could turn into a beautiful film. Trust me, I didn't know how to go about film making. So when I got to Limbe, I met this guy in Gala. Mm. So in Gala, told me, guy, this is amazing. Let's do a film. Let's make a film. I was like, okay, yeah, let's make a film. Yeah. How do we make a film? He told me we have to do call for a rehearsals. Yes. I was like, okay. We went, we printed flyers, pasted them around my four limbe. Yeah. Rehearsals. And then we came, rehearsals ground. People, people turned up. We had, I think, over 30 people wow. for the first day. They turned up. He was like, okay, Scott, direct them. <laughs> I looked at him, I was like, no, guy, direct them, you are both. He was like, no, you wrote the script, you master it, yes. and then you're from the university, you yes. master English. Right. I was like, no, this is not happening. Now those difficulties in doing films came yeah, to play. Exactly. I saw myself just doing my, just being natural, directing them. You know, you have to do like mm -hmm. this. You have to do like this. After that, everybody was like, wow. They were amazing. This guy is an amazing director. director. Trust me, I didn't know anything, anything about movie making. About movie making, about directing. And then the quest started. Hmm. That was, the upload 
was what launched me yeah, into right. my directorial uh, 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 journey. Yeah. You know, at that time, having this thing, having uh, internet was a hard. hassle, yes. Yeah. I uh, remember an hour was 500 francs, mm -hmm. and you could use that 500 francs just to even open the picture. So I saw myself researching online what yeah. directing is. Yes. Researching online what directing is. I used to hawk. You know a hawker, right? Yes, of course. Sell things from mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. yeah, Vande Ambila. So I saw me using all my profits on so internet in your... oh. to research. I developed I, I, I always call it stubborn passion. Uh, I developed a stubborn passion for filmmaking from the statement <laughs> I had on the day of the first rehearsals. It kept me going. Mm -hmm. And I'm here we here. are today. Here we are today. So I, I, I'm very interested in, so after that, did you get another kind of uh, formal training where you would say, I'm a trained director from this, or just you built all this excellence just by experience? Mm, I always try to not tell lies. Yes. Or I've not had any formal training. Yeah, I've not had any formal training. I've yeah. had just tutorials, mm -hmm. master classes, wow. tutorials, master classes. I've had a lot of research. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of research when it comes to filmmaking. Yeah. And I told one of my friends that if you want to calculate the money I've spent in mm -hmm. researches, in master classes, mm -hmm. in doing films, it could be way more than fees paid in a, in a film school. Yes. Very possible. I think that, that that has worked so much for a lot of professionals in, who are in are into the arts and all forms of uh, visual arts. Because I, when I talk about uh, that, I'm talking about people like Dr. Ken Stevens. Yeah. I think he didn't also do any form of formal yeah. training. So, so what would what would be your opinion after this experience of? Uh, uh, do you think talent should go before uh, training, or you think the two should work together? I really think. Uh Talent can go before training. Hmm. Training can do where there is no talent. It can bring talent into existence. Right. It's very possible. So I believe in the two yeah. working together. Yeah, but if you meet a, a talented person, would you definitely advise them that, okay, see, it's primordial for you to get some formal kind of training so you know the dynamics of how we go about this business? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. To it, That's where you fine-tune your talent. Right. That's where you, 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 you set you create a niche for yourself mm -hmm. because only talent won't get you there. Yeah. We have seen talented people fall off with nothing. Yes. From the stages. Yeah, so mm -hmm. definitely when you have talent you need to refine talent. Yes. You need to refine talent. It's just like playing football. Mm -hmm. You can be the best footballer if you don't train, forget it. Exactly. You can be the best writer if you don't train. If you don't write consistently, yep. forget it. Yeah. It hap it's happened to me sometimes. There were times I really fell down in all mm. of this. I think I went for almost a year without writing anything. Hmm. When I wanted to relaunch my writing, I was like, hey, Scott, are you the one writing this? Hmm. So it gets to that. If, you yeah. don't, if you're not consistent with it, then it will dies. fall off. Yeah. Yes, it will fall off. And it will slip off, not die. It will just slip off. Yeah, or you will go to slumber and yeah. then you need something to wake it up again. Definitely. Yes, and, and here we are today. You, you have, you've directed most of the biggest movies that we have in Cameroon. In fact, uh, we've come to a place where if someone sees a movie and they say this movie is directed by Anna John Scott, they don't need any questions to know that, okay, this is going to be a good one. Okay. So, <laughs> of course, that's true. Everyone can testify. A lot of people have given that testimony. Okay. A lot of people were interested when we announced that we're going to be having you. And I'm sure that this is the time when a lot of uh, movie directors will be very interested in knowing what you apply. And that will bring me to reminding you televiewers that if you have a question, if you have a reservation, if you have an appraisal, or just something you want to say to our cute director here, please do well to type that on the comment section. If there's a question, of course, he will answer. And this time around, uh, we will make sure that we relate his answers to you by writing them on the comment section. We will not be able to reply them live today. Yes, so uh, I was talking about the fact that you have so many big movies to your credit. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people wanted to know, how do you approach the process of uh, accepting 
a movie project? I think uh, accepting the movie project, the first thing I look into is the script. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the script is most important. Yeah. Because uh, the, the, the beauty of a script is what really, really can motivate the director, yeah. motivate actors, and motivate all the crew members. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the script is not good, I will give my advice. Yes. I will give you where you have to fix it up. Mm -hmm. If you need to hire another writer, I will tell you, if your writer can fix it, okay, let the writer fix it. Or oh, if they can let you fix it. You're a uh, good writer. You're a... Yeah, I'm a good writer, <laughs> but sometimes you don't have the time to. To do that. Yeah, sometimes you really don't have the time to. <laughs> Other times, you might have the time to. You know that if you put some conditions out there, it will yes. be difficult. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, there are, uh, definitely I know there are producers who are struggling. Yes, please. Yeah. So, so would you would you 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 said you know that there are producers who are struggling? Mm -hmm. Let us compare when you started movie making and now. Yeah. Would you say we, we've come to a point where a movie maker can live life exclusively on making movies? Like, if yes, what's the percentage? How many? I think uh, it's a very big yes. Hmm. Yeah, people live their lives now making just films. Yes. Yeah. People live their life. Film, film, film is filmmaking is very, very <laughs> lucrative. Yes. Yeah, that has been the reality in the in, in, in the past years. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yes. Very lucrative. Even me, I think if I can direct just two films a year, I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. Depending on the films, okay. of course. Yeah, not directing films from producers who are struggling. Though I really wish to work with producers who are struggling. Mm -hmm. I want my name. To be to be to be kind of like tattooed in mm. their success stories. Okay. A lot. I think uh, this is something of a mind game too, because most producers out there, there are some who really want to work yes. with me. True. And when we meet, the exchange is like, I was scared. I was this. I mm. was, no. This uh, is an understanding. Uh, this is you. Simple. And this is straightforward. Me. Yes. Yeah. And it's true. They have tapped me like uh, expensive. We were going to talk about that. Yeah, okay, thank God we are talking about that. We are already talking about yeah, that. Yeah, we are talking about that. Yes, I am expensive, mm. but I am not unreasonable. I am not expensive to the producer's detriment. Mm. I refuse to bring another man's project down. I refuse that. Yeah. That's why most of the times when I have my pre-negotiations with the producer, I always tell him, if mm. there is no money, if, mo if, money if, if you have problem with funds, we could get into a partnership. Hmm. Maybe you just give me a few, some flat rate and then you, give, you propose me a small percentage of the profit. Right. Of the income, of the profit. I think it gets us going. Yeah. Yeah, it gets me on your project and then it gets you smiling too. The money maybe you would have spent on me yes. as a director's view, you, you, you spend on other things. I think I think the, the, one of the crises we have is people fail to create a balance between um, making movies as an entertainer and also having the business part of it. Because as a movie maker, you definitely are considering okay passion and business as well. Definitely. Uh, so if you're talking about sustainability, you must not only look at it as art. I'm doing this for the passion. You must also look at how to maneuver making it a business so definitely. that you can you, you can sustain yourself. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, we, we, we would be talking about some of your projects okay. that I, I would love you to mention. But then let's talk about uh, The Fisherman's Diary. All right. You, you wrote that film? I wrote it. You directed it? I directed it. And, and so far it's a, a Cameroonian's entry for International Best, Best Film at the Academy Award. It tell was. us about how, how does it feel? In, in fact, tell us what motivated that story and, and how you feel about so far. I think one thing I always tell people first when they ask the writing part of The Fisherman's Diary, yeah. I always tell them, I wrote The Fisherman's Diary way back in 2015. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. That's where I did most of my great works hmm. because I had the time. Yes. I could think, I could maneuver myself and do anything. Mm -hmm. So writing The Fisherman's Diary and then seeing it come out that way, it's definitely, it feels great. As a creator, because a writer is a creator, mm -hmm. a writer is a god. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it definitely makes you feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And especially when the people receive exact... The way you preconceived yes, it. Yes, when they receive it, you're happier. Yeah. 
yeah because for the fisherman's diary i really wanted people to receive more information they receive something different mm. but yeah it was good still <laughs> i wanted people to receive that tiny information that your child must not be who you are whoa very true yeah it's true we had to pass through the fisherman and mm -hmm. the daughter and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. like that but that's the oh that, that that's a hidden that's a hidden theme that we're just getting to realize now from that film yeah a lot of people will not approach it that way. Yeah, because the truth is in our world, especially in Cameroon, most parents want their children to be who they were. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, their results are not the best. Yeah, and a lot of children, if, I'm, if I should cut you short, are also giving credit, they credit their failure to where they come from. True. <laughs> so that narrative has to be changed. <laughs> yeah, true, mm -hmm. very true. Yeah, that was in 2021. Oh, okay. Yes. It was selected to represent Cameroon at the Academy Award. Mm -hmm. Definitely, every filmmaker, you feel happy. Mm -hmm. You feel very happy. But me, as director, The Fisherman's Diary, the way it was, right deep down, yes, I was happy it represented. But the standard, mm -hmm. the quality, the technicality, let me say so, was not of that reference, was not, was not what you would get into Oscars and compete with. Really? Yes. Really. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes, really, because the truth is um, we did basic filmmaking mm -hmm. in The Fisherman's Diary, basic realization. Okay. Yeah. You know, we are in a, we, we are in a country where you don't have the things you really need to realize the projects you want to realize. Right. Yeah. That's why in the Fisherman's Diary, you will not see a crane shot, a master shot that's coming from here. And then all of those, all of those things that make cinema lively. But director, if I, if I should cast you, do you think a great film that should penetrate the international space should be maybe a high budget film that, you know, involves all of this you're mentioning? It must not be a very high budget film, but let it have the most important which was lacking during the production technical of the equipment technical equipment mm. yeah it's just like there were there were scenes we would have loved to shoot uh, yeah. in the sea mm -hmm. but we didn't mm. shoot them in the sea we transformed them to out of the sea because we did not have the equipment that could realize those scenes in the sea i cannot get into a boat those flying boats a dumb beach. No, I love myself. I love my family. <laughs> okay. But if there was a provision for maybe a good big boat, yes, where you can get in and then there are divers assigned mm -hmm. in case something happens. Yes, yeah. you are assured. You are certain. You can get into the high seas and shoot. <laughs> and then we maybe it is also possible you shoot such scenes out of the high sea, but you need. Technicality, CGI. Yes. We did not have all of that. The luxury. Yes. That actually we would have loved to have. So Fisherman's Diary, we did our best with the small we had. Hmm. I mean, anyone who watches the movie just as an audience would would say would say the contrary. We we definitely think it's it's one of the biggest Cameron has had. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is one of the biggest. It is a film I'm proud of. Yes. Don't get this twisted. Mm -hmm. But it is a film I would have loved, loved to do more. To do more. Which means you, there's a lot of aspirations, and Cameron should definitely be waiting for more. Mm, yeah, I I am hungry. Yes. I am hungry. Yes. I think that's what keeps me going because mm -hmm. I am very, very. I'm I'm a hungry person. Mm. I want to be the best of me. I don't want to leave this world thinking I would have done. I would have done. I would have done. Yeah. That's why I keep trying to be my best. Mm -hmm. And that's why I keep, I'm my best critic. Yes. Yeah, I criticize myself a lot. I criticize myself a lot. A, a movie maker was on the show and uh, was of the opinion that we can sell out to the international space. We can develop CFI. We can develop movie making in Cameroon if we first focus on Asaba movies. As he as he put it, like uh, I don't know if I should use the, use the word substandard, but he spoke about uh, using what we have and making basic movies, just like you mentioned. Definitely, 
I am of that opinion. But do you think we are still at that level? Our high budget films are very low budget international films. Mm. So with our highest high. budget film is not even a low budget film in other countries. Yes. I was exchanging with a South African filmmaker for my next project, Yaji, the boy with the invisible tattoo. Mm -hmm. When I told him my budget, he was marveled. Mm. He was like, no, 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 don't say that. So he had watched The Fisherman's Diary. Yes. He asked, so what was the budget of The Fisherman's Diary? When I told him he the budget surprised. of The Fisherman's Diary, he was like, no way. How can you make this much with that leisure? Yes. So that is why I easily tell people we are very, very gifted in Cameroon. Yes. The few wise investors who get into this business at this time, they will make, how can I say, they will make a, a lot of money for themselves. Mm -hmm. We can see for the Fisherman's Diary. Yes. The producer did not cry. The producer is all smite. For a filmmaker, for a film producer, he's had his money more than, that is more than 20 times. Wow. Yes. I'm not mincing words. Mm -hmm. Just from Netflix, he had his money with a lot, he had quite some money. Yes. Cameroonian context, a lot of money. And in Canapus, so. Before we talk about IAG. Yeah. Yes. Let's talk about uh, that preoccupation. Uh, you, you've spoken about the difficulties and how much budget you had uh, when you were shooting The Fisherman's Diary. And mm -hmm. I think you, 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 you are not the only person that suffers this or that has mentioned this. A lot of Cameroonian movie makers, uh, or they have this worry that it's difficult for them to fetch resources to be able to produce movies the way they want them. Uh, last week we were with uh, Professor Fai Donatus okay. and we were trying to see if we could explore the possibilities at the Ministry of Art and Culture for, for movie mm. makers if they want to go into movie making. But then what else do you think can be put in place for us to be able to produce movies that fit the international standard? I think uh, there are a number of things that we really need to look into mm -hmm. if we need to produce f films that can compete yes. in the big platforms. Because definitely we already have films that are competing in the international Okay, the market. big platforms. The big platforms, okay. like maybe the Oscars, yes. the Cannes, the Toronto International Film Festivals. Right. Yes. We definitely need good equipment. Mm -hmm. Good technical equipment. Yes. Yes. And definitely we can never run away from budget. Yes. We need good budget. Somebody like me, a director, I need good I need time mm -hmm. to realize a scene. A producer can come with the greatest script yes, and tells you, I want this film done in two weeks, I want this film done in three weeks, I want this film. So you are already under duress before you start mm -hmm. directing. So I'm looking forward at the time where a producer comes and tells and asks me, Scott, when do you, how many scenes do you think you can realize a day? I'll tell the producer three scenes. Mm -hmm. He's like, okay, three scenes a day, okay, we'll shoot for a month and a half. Yes. We'll shoot for two months, a future film. Trust me, the things that are hidden in the heads of Cameroonians when it comes to cinema, mm -hmm. to filmmaking, the technicalities we have, it will beat a lot of international films. Mm. Bet you, you can use 10,000 to produce a film here in Cameroon now. Another person uses 500,000 to produce a similar film in another country. Ours will beat theirs. Wow. It's possible. We have the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We have the manpower, not yet expensive. We have people who are collaborative. We have welcoming souls in Cameroon. You pay an extra in Cameroon sometimes, 1,000, 2,000. Yes, or well, just thank you for coming. You can't even dare that <laughs> in South Africa. Yes. Extras make, extras make uh, money in South Africa more than our A-list actors. Mm -hmm. Very possible. So that's why when you do a certain film with a certain budget, at least just have that. My, my main issue is time. Yes. When you have the time factor on your side, then 
we will meet in big stages and we'll beat a lot of filmmakers elsewhere. Mm. So we definitely need investors. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so how, how do you, you've been a producer, sir. Yeah. How, how did you go about, did you succeed to get you an investor? How did you go about that? How do you think we can fetch investors for, for, for our movies? I think uh, the last time I produced a film was in 2014, <laughs> my gallery. Oh, that's yeah, a great a, film, I've watched yeah, it. It was a friend of mine hmm. yeah, who, who decided to sacrifice. <laughs> hmm. And the truth is he didn't have his money back. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't have his money back. Definitely to produce a film right now, nowadays, what I look for, I look for investors. I also look for sponsors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look for, we have corporate sponsorship. Yeah. Yeah, that's, those are the things I look for. And I think one of the, one of the things that, that scares, uh, has been scaring uh, movie investors away is the fact that most of them don't seem to have return on investment when, when they, they invest for projects. Do you think... Um, um, substandard production could account for that? I think it uh, depends on the vision of whosoever you meet yes. or to would, work with. Or would you account it to lack of marketability? In now, in today's Cameroon, it will not be lack of mar marketability. Yeah. If your product is excellent, you have the money. You have mm. the market. Yes. Yeah. Because the truth is, if you have an excellent film out there, mm -hmm. trust me, aggregators will rush to have them. No. And when they rush to have them, they will do everything possible for the distributors to buy them. So it begins with, before production, it yes. begins with the script. Mm. And then it gets to the kind of producer who is managing the script. Yes. And then the director that the producer is handling, handing this vision to. The extent of your vision is just the extent of the kind of fruit you have. Mm. You cannot have a vision of a baby and you want to have results of a macho man. No way. I think a lot of investors have, yeah, kind of like been scared because a few of their friends have gotten into the wrong boats. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now you cannot really blame the producer because yeah. the producer thought otherwise. True. The director probably thought otherwise. There are things that a lot of directors and filmmakers have gotten into that they have not realized is a big problem. Mm -hmm. The issue of pressure on set. It's Ooh. a big problem okay. to the quality and standard of productions we have. If you are under duress, you cannot think right. And, and most times they, they attribute it to budget. They're really it's like, okay, budget. The more days we spend, the more money we spend. And so this is going to be too... Yes. So a producer comes with small money, mm -hmm. he could have an amazing script. Yes. But now you people have to squeeze time yes. and shoot it. He wants you to shoot eight scenes a day, ten scenes a day. You are not Jesus. Yeah. So, so those are the things that really, really, really reduce our, our, our standards, mm -hmm. our qualities. We shoot under duress. So have you had that experience or when, when all you my have life, a script? Oh. All my projects. I've had that experience. Hmm. So That's why I'm approaching, I want to approach Yajay. Yajay is, I'll be producing Yajay. Yeah, let's, let's talk about Yajay. Yeah, I'll be producing Yajay with my very good friend Proxy. Okay. Of whom I started my film career with. I want to approach Yajay from a different perspective. I will not, I'll be shooting Yajay for at least a month and a week. Mm -hmm. I have maximum of four scenes a day. Because I want to shoot from a place of liberty. Mm. I want a film that when, 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 when somebody watches and says this director is stupid, I should take the entire blame. Yeah. Or when somebody watches and says, wow, this director is excellent, I should take that glory. Mm. I want to do it in every step is intentional. Yes, it's a film we were supposed to have realized uh, the early this year, mm -hmm. but because the standards have not been met, I cannot go on set. Oh, wow. I will only go on set when the full budget is met because I don't want to compromise. I don't want to push another investor running away from this industry. Okay. Yeah. I instead want to pull investors in. That's, that's, that's a beautiful thing to say. Yeah. So I want my investors to be proud mm. of investing. 
So. You're not shooting till you're ready. I have to be ready before yes. I shoot. Yeah, so we have, we're looking forward to, to, to Yaji. But let, let's talk a bit about the, you wrote the story? Mm, yeah, with Proxy and uh, mm. Geraldine Foba. The boy with the invisible tattoo. With, with the invisible tattoo. Okay, invisible. Yeah. Okay, you, you want to give us a snippet of... <laughs> yeah, Yaji is a... Oh, I'm throwing light on autistic children. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm throwing light on autistic children because uh, in our community we look at these children as witches, yes. curses. Mm. We look at them as uh, demon possessed. Whereas these children, they have a breach in communication and most of them are prodigies and geniuses. Mm. That is the story of Yaji. I'm representing a minority, a, dis a, a, a disfavored minority. You, you, you're really emotional about that. I am emotional about that because I have witnessed children with autism. Right. I've witnessed how some of them are treated. Funny enough, when I was growing up, I treated Someone an like autistic that. child because of my environment. Mm -hmm. Funny enough, it's painful. Not only to the children, the parents. Yes. It's painful. So if we don't understand who, how these children are, who these children are, if we don't understand that these children are not only a liability, that they can be an asset, a big asset yes. to the community, then oh, wow. we will continuously push them into the streets. We have pushed a lot of, of autistic them. children mm -hmm. to be mad people in the street. Oh. Yeah. So... That's so psychoanalytical. Yeah, that's the kind of story I want to tell in Yaji. Mm. Yeah. So, so what phase are we at when it comes to that project? How, should we await uh, auditions or the casting is already done? Uh, mm. I'm sure the public is so eager to hear. I think we've had partial casting. We've done auditions. We did auditions in Douala. We did auditions in Yaoundé. Yeah. Yeah, definitely we'll be doing auditions in Boya. The time is coming, we'll announce that. Oh, wow. We've had okay. a partial cast mm -hmm. already. Yeah, and most of the partial cast we have had are the international cast. Yeah. Definitely you cannot shoot for a film with only international cast. Yeah. You will not be promoting your own country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's the kind of film we need just the best. Mm -hmm. We we'll need just the best. You, so. you, you mentioned you, you cannot shoot with uh, just international cast. Yeah, we cannot. Why would I be producing a film and then I have only international faces on it. So, what, so, am I, what good am I doing to my country, man? Oh. So, so tell us about your opinion on, what's your opinion on uh, the 8020 campaign? Mm. You, you just mentioned something now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think 8020 campaign is not bad. Mm -hmm. I always want to be, to, to, to be very logical when I'm responding to questions like yes, this. Yes, yeah, I understand. The truth is, I w I'm a Cameroonian. Mm -hmm. I want to push Cameroonian as much as I can. There are other truths. Right now in entertainment, yes. in film, you cannot sell your product to international platforms without using foreigners. Yes. They but would you be numbers. using less of foreigners and less more of, of the of country? Course, less yes. of foreigners. And the way I always go about it is uh, I always make them, uh, the, the, our, our actors mm -hmm. to take the major roles. Yeah. And then they're supported by the foreigners. Mm -hmm. But it depends because if, if, if I don't get the best actor who can take the from major role from Cameroon, I don't, I, don't, I don't cut corners. Yeah. I don't cut corners when it comes to especially creativity. Yeah. yeah. And at the end of the day, I think movie making is so technical because you can still... Um, be working on the 80 20 basis mm -hmm. but then maybe the most of the actors are from outside but what about the crew there are people that are working behind the cameras that you definitely hire from home yeah but a lot of people will assess the 80 20 based on what they see, on, on, they screen. see on screen but then movie making takes a whole lot from writing the script just like he said you have uh, production managers you have makeup artists oh, everybody there's a lot of people that are involved and so sometimes uh, we can't just assess that just based on what we see in front of our screens because a lot of work goes into that. And let's talk about your, your coming to Yaoundé. Yeah. Yeah, you were selected for a writing program. Yeah, I was selected uh, for a writing program that would take place in the United States of America. Wow. Iowa precisely. 
And you are representing Cameroon. And I'm representing Cameroon. It's called the International Writing Program. I think it's the biggest and oldest uh, multidisciplinary writing residency in the mm -hmm. world. Organized by the U.S. Department of State. Yes, it was launched by the U.S. Department of State mm -hmm. and uh, I took part in the competition because mm -hmm. you have to submit a create a, a, a story, a script. Mm -hmm. Yes, so I submitted the script and then I was called. I was Beautiful. like, okay, mm -hmm. you'll be going to Iowa. Wow. You'll be there for some months and then uh, for exchange, especially. Yes. So I'm representing Cameroon as a cultural ambassador for this program. Oh wow! And it really, it really elates me. It 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 it, it pleases me especially because it's coming from what I love. Yes. Writing. Yeah. This uh, this is one of these are one of those times that I would really wish my grandma. Mm. Or my mom was alive uh -oh. to tell them those things that you did to me subconscious, not even knowing you were imparting something in yeah. me. This is, it's getting to the international levels. Mm. Yeah, because from what I was told, it is a highly competitive Platform. program. Yeah. yeah, it is a highly competitive program, and of course, you know, we definitely know the integrity of the U.S. Department of State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't they don't go mediocre. They, exactly. Yeah, so it's fulfilling. Yeah. It's fulfilling. But again, it is the beginning of a dream. Beautiful. To me. Yeah. It's the beginning so of to, not only to you but to the entire Cameroon. Of course. <laughs> to the entire Cameroon because what I'll learn there I yes. have to come and verse it mm -hmm. on, on, on my fellow uh, filmmakers and, 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 and my generation. Yes. That's the way I'll be imparting my own nation too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is a dream come true. Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely a dream come true. Uh, congratulations to you, sir. Thank you so we, much. We are, we are so happy that you are doing everything to represent 237 Cinema. Yeah, thank uh, you so much. Yeah. And so, so how has your experience been in Yaoundé? You, you've been having some media tours and attending meetings at the ministry? Or? Yeah, I've been going around, especially I've been behaving like an actor these days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on camera a lot, uh -huh. yeah, and uh, at least I had an audience with the minister because he himself, he wanted to give me a hand of congratulation. Oh, wow. Yeah, and to more give me words of motivation to represent the nation the best way I can. Hmm. This is 237, and yeah. you know, impossible in Nepal, Cameroon. Where? So definitely, from the exchange with him, mm -hmm. I really want to be, I will do my best. Yeah. Especially not just for me yeah because my being here is not a solitary effort a lot of people contributed yes of course to making this me yeah and so the least i can do is to contribute into other writers lives yes to make them me or bigger than me mm -hmm. yeah that's how cameroon grows that's how the country evolves mm -hmm. that's how we correct a lot of vices yes. in the country through our writing yeah we can really propel our nation to higher height like i was exchanging with some friends i told them we are definitely the ambassadors of cameroon yeah the image of cameroon depends on us the the, the, the wealth of cameroon depends on us like america is celebrated as that world power yeah thanks to cinema hmm. thanks to cinema when I watch American films, I want to be. I want to go to America. When mm. you watch American films, you want to go to America. Mm -hmm. We have beauty to showcase. Yeah, exactly. We have attitudes to correct. Yeah. Through our filmmaking, yeah. through script writing, yeah. we have a lot to do. Yeah. So that's why I'm going there, going there because I really want to get loaded up. Why I give them our values too? It's mm -hmm. an exchange program. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, so you, you, you particularly believe that uh, cinema is it's a very important tool in valorizing our culture? Mm, yes, if not the most important. Yeah. But cinema is definitely very, very, very important. Mm -hmm. We were having a discussion with friends. I mentioned that cinema can stop the Anglophone crisis. That's, that's an interesting yes, one. Yes, I see. What we are doing is not child's play. Mm -hmm. yeah, we are talking about the power digs deep into souls yes it causes you to reflect that's why we do films that's why when somebody watches a film when you were in the in the cinema hall watching the fisherman's diary mm -hmm. you cried you yes. laughed because we were planting mm -hmm. 
in your soul. Yeah. We're planting something, a message, exactly. so we can plant peace. Yes. A message of peace in the souls of Cameroonians. It's possible. Hmm. Very possible. Yeah. Uh, this is this is uh, uh, the people have had the opinion that um, they're talking about writings. Um, I've had some people mention uh, John Kengon Kenga songs across the Mongolo. Mm -hmm. God bless his soul. He passed on recently. Uh, they say writings like such uh, they created awareness in the minds of uh, Cameroonians and could have even sparked uh, the reason why the crisis started. I think. Uh I choose to be a positive writer. Yes. I don't want to be the writer who sparks hate. Yes. I want to be the writer who brings solutions mm -hmm. because that is me. That's my nature. I'm a solution bringer. I light up a place when I go there. That is my nature. Of course, that's why I am in Christ. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yes. So I cannot afford to write films to spark up hate. Now, I'm not taking anything away from his creative power, yeah. but I just choose to want to use my own creative power <laughs> to foster peace, yeah. to foster goodwill, to motivate somebody yeah. who is dying. Yeah. Uh, uh, director, a lot of people observe that it rather sparked up awareness. You know, sometimes you can um, want to advocate for something, yeah. but when it comes now to a point where the masses are involved, you cannot direct how they react to it. Would you? As, as a writer, yes. you have that power. Oh, really? Like I mentioned, a writer is like God. <laughs> you have that power. You can create them to think towards this. Okay. More towards this. Not more towards the other direction. Mm. It's possible. That's, that's deep. Yeah. Hmm. So your pen can sign peace and for the country. Do a lot of things. As well as your pen can spark a crisis. Hmm. But I choose to sign peace with my pen. Yeah, beautifully put. Yeah, Let, let's let's talk about um, when you look at um, the industry. Yeah. When you started and now. When I look at the industry when I started and now, it's like looking at. Do you think? Do you think we've created that impact with not just the pen but the screen, every other thing that has to do with film? Do you think we are where you you envisage that would be when you started movie making? Truth be told, when I started movie making, I didn't know I would be here. Yeah, so you went I on. I would be at this stage. Right. And truth be told again, when I was reaching this stage, I knew this stage that I am in now <laughs> would not be enough. So each step you take, horizons open up. Yeah. Each new step comes with new realizations, a new push. So I think this stage, what I'm looking at, <laughs> what I'm looking at, like the Apostle Paul says that it's unlawful for the, for, 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 to, 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 be, to, be, to be expressed by words. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking at from my creative side at this stage is very, 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 it's frightening, but it's real. It, and I know it will come to pass. Which means you think we've, we, we still have a lot to do. We still have so much to do, especially <laughs> concerning the nation Cameroon yes. and Africa. Cameroon has to benefit from our storytelling. Africa has to benefit from our storytelling. I don't think Cameroon has benefited yet. Maybe not as much as Cameroon would love to benefit, let yeah. me put it that way. Yeah. I think Cameroon is yet to benefit a lot from us. We're just getting started. We are getting started. Yes. Yes. Cameroon is Africa's yes. in miniature. Mm. And Africa is unique in the world. It means Cameroon is unique in the world. Mm. Let, let's talk about your, your, your stance as um, a Christian yeah. and movie production. A lot of people find, find that contradictory. And sometimes there's been a lot of um, controversies. <laughs> Why did you laugh? <laughs> I like it when it's contradictory. <laughs> yes, you know, but you know what I'm saying. That's yeah. a subject that's quite controversial. Yeah. Uh, we have, uh, if I should mention, uh, there's this lady that did used to do movies in Nigeria called Joy Ejirin. Okay. She she let her give her life to Christ, and she and a lot of people have the opinion that, for example, if you are born again, you should only do Christian movies. Um, even if you are doing movies that are not Christian, but you are passing on the message, there might be nudity and blah 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 that will. Uh, spoil society rather than fix it. 
Okay. Do you have limitations when you make movies? What are your morals on that subject? Uh, definitely, I have uh, certain limitations, but uh, not to the extent of instead killing my creativity. We, we just finished the cinema tour of my film, The Half Heaven. Ha Half Heaven. Half Heaven. Mm -hmm. If you watch Half Heaven, it is a Christian film, mm -hmm. but we did not tell it. Like in that like, narrative. Yes, a Christian film. <laughs> yeah. There is smoking in half heaven. Mm -hmm. There is drug abuse in half heaven. Because we wanted the message to be passed right. Mm -hmm. As a creative, if you fail to show the real world, then you will fail to, to correct that world. So I don't take those ones for granted. Yes. If it is nudity that will lead me to pass my Christian message more, I you will show for it. it. I will go for it. Well, a lot of people. But are... if it is nudity for the sake of let's go, yeah, new, yeah, nah, I'm not there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some people still observe that um, the eyes fit the spirit a lot. Yeah. Do you agree? In Most other time. words, um, you, demons can be transmitted through what you see. Let me put that. For Definitely. example, they say, minus the message that you want to pass across with the entire film. For example, if you are telling um, a modern story. This, you don't bother about that. But if you're telling a traditional story where we know the end of the story should have a moral, uh, moral lesson to teach, yeah. yes, we, we might have the lesson at the end of the story. Yeah. But in media race, somewhere in the, like along the line, you will have um, maybe some, a lady seducing a man. Yeah. They say um, it can spark maybe lost in someone, aside the message that the story will tell at the end. Yeah, that's why when I do a film. Yes. I do a lot of incantations. Hmm, okay. I speak to my products a lot. Beautiful. Yeah, because I really do not want to be the person passing across the wrong message. Mm -hmm. And from the few films I've had, I tested that site in Half Heaven. Everybody coming out of Half Heaven, nobody gave that review as that kind of some, as something that yeah. got glue yeah. in their mind. We navigated past prostitutes mm. and we passed the message of Christ. So it's very, very possible. Yeah. The truth is, it begins with you, the creator. Mm -hmm. It begins with you, the writer. That's why I, I, I am of the opinion that when writing, if I'm writing a painful scene and I don't cry, then I have light. Mm. Yeah. I don't laugh then I have light. Mm -hmm. So I get to feel what my audience will feel. That's the trueness of writing, of filmmaking. So as a director, when I'm directing a scene, I know what you will think here. Yes. I know the kind of emotions that will, 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 will cut across. So what I do is possibly that I tone this down, mm -hmm. but I don't feel at it. I just tone it down so that it shouldn't impact you yes. in a way that I don't want it to go. Mm -hmm. that's the, that, I think that's the job of a director. Mm -hmm. The job of a director is complex. Yeah. Very, very complex. Because your message might be good, but the way you go about it spoils the entire yes. thing. And of course, that will not be you being a good director. Mm -hmm. That will be you misleading your audience. Yeah. So, so, so do you think the, the, the end game of a production is um, the director's responsibility? Definitely, it is. Even, even if the story had limitations from the writing or from... The, it is your point. responsibility as a director. That's why you take it or leave it. Mm. That's why you go for the story or you don't go for it. Oh, you that, make that's your making decisions. sense now. Yeah, you make your decisions. Mm -hmm. Nobody is having a gun yes. to pick that story and direct it. Yeah. I think you spoke about using the pen to, to bring peace. Yeah. Let's talk about... Um, um, I don't want to use the word uniting because it, there's no hatred in the first place. Of course. But we are talking about um, English movie making and French movie making in Cameroon. Yeah. Do you think there's a synergy between the two? Of course. But, but before you, you, I remember when Mrs. Brenda was made a board chair of the CFI. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Louis Basek of uh, the Ecran Noir Film Festival, he made a post uh, congratulating her and then said uh, something about he hoping that she would use her status to bring together... The English and yes, French yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I think uh, it's very, very possible mm -hmm. to have that. It's very possible. Let me give some, I think, uh, some examples. Yes. We have a Cran Noir. 
-hmm. It's owned by a francophone. English films have been there. Yes. And English films have been winning. Always. Yeah. And then you already see that collaboration. Yeah. We have uh, Anorin Wanembom. Yeah. His film, The Chariots of the Gods. Yeah. The producer is a francophone. Mm -hmm. Anorin directed. Yeah. We had English actors in it. Most of them are English actors and a French actor. I, I do voiceovers there all the time through okay. the industry. They hired me, I do most of their English voiceovers. And then I was, <laughs> before, before my, uh, the announcement of uh, my, my, uh, the writing program, yes. I was supposed to direct a French series. Okay. 52 episodes titled Secretaries. Oh, wow. Most of the technicians are people I've worked with. They are Anglophones. Most of the actors are francophones. There is already that collaboration going mm -hmm. on. But now definitely we need that legal framework okay. to bring these people consciously together. Mm -hmm. Because I understand this happening now is just more like businesses. But we should be more conscious of yes. the fact that we are brothers. We can work. Mm -hmm. We have families that are French, English. Yeah. A lot in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. We have English people married to French people, French people married. In short, we have Cameroon. French children going to English so schools. So we should do Cameroonian films. Yes. So when I do a film, I do Cameroon films. Yeah. But, but then I'm, I'm looking at uh, what's coming to that point where we have a blockbuster that's a fusion of English and French in the same movie. That, that's what I'm saying. I think you're already giving me an idea. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, because it will, it will be great. It mm -hmm. will definitely be great. Yeah. It will definitely be great. Uh, do you have any of that in Half Heaven? Yeah. I have a French uh, character in Half Heaven. But that's what I'm looking yeah. at. I have a French character in Half Heaven, mm -hmm. though it was played by an Anglophone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. I have a French character in Half Heaven. Okay. Yeah. Marvis Anne. It would have been difficult for you to be able to locate someone that could play that role perfectly mm -hmm. from the French community. Yeah. But I'm thinking that maybe it's because the interaction is limited. Yeah. And so it might be difficult for you to fish out. And so when you are engaged in a project and you're thinking, who can fit into this role? It's not easy for you to source a French actor. So, okay, Mavis Anne can speak French. So, yeah. let me just get her in. But then, if we are targeting, um, creating a fusion between the two, it would not necessarily just be at the level of casting. Uh, what would you think can possibly be the venues that we can create to have daily interactions with actors from both venues? Just for the, fact, uh, for the reason of networking. Yeah. Not necessarily because, okay, I have a movie now, I want to cast this person. Okay. But we have maybe a kind of association, some kind of come together, some stuff that bring them together. Yeah, I think get... we need an umbrella. Yes. We need an umbrella over everybody's head. Yes, but would you say the um, CFI is doing that? So? Yes, yeah, CFI is doing that, but I think CFI can do more. Yeah. CFI can do more. You know, the truth is, it is possible that I am a director and I'm not belonging to the Director's Guild hmm. of Cameroon. Because I am not aware there is a director's guild of Cameroon. Oh, really? No, I'm not talking. It's not reality. I say it is possible. Okay. It is okay. It is possible that You're a, setting certain, an example. a certain person out there. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually in the director's guild of Cameroon. Okay. So it was an example that yeah. they fr we can have French filmmakers mm -hmm. who don't know that there is a CFI. Exactly. So I think this is the responsibility of the CFI to reach out to them. Yes. That this thing is not only for Anglophones. This is for us all. And the, a clear example is Mr. Clay Edu. Mm -hmm. He belongs to the Directors Guild of Cameroon. Okay. He's a French, a great filmmaker from the French side. Mm -hmm. A director. He belongs, he's with us. He's a brother. We, there is no discrimination. Yes. We are one. That's a clear example. Yeah. And I think I've... Uh, I've, I've directed films with, uh, with French actors, like pure French actors, mm -hmm. like Roger Brice. He acted in my film Samba, mm -hmm. the TV series Samba. Mm -hmm. He also acted in Silent Storm. Yeah. Yeah. So. So, so you've not only done movies, you've also done TV shows. Mm -hmm. You've done Samba. And Apple for Two. Apple for Two. Yeah. Yes. So um, would you say it's, it takes more to make... Uh, a series than when you're just making a feature film definitely it takes more it takes more energy it takes more funds mm -hmm. it takes more you need to be resilient you yes need, you need to be tough to realize a series mm -hmm. so it takes it takes more more patience it takes more of everything yeah because definitely you you especially as a director now you're dealing with a big family 
Yes. You're dealing with a big family. In the future of him, it's possible you deal even with a bigger family in mm -hmm. the future of him, but just for a short while. Yeah, the, the plot is tightly woven, but then when you are on with a series, you expand shit more on the plot and yes. develop characters more and all of that. And then on, uh, there is this thing they call group dynamism. Okay. Yeah, you know, when you deal with a lot of people, you have to deal with a lot of attitudes. Yes. Now I can deal with hostile attitudes. Hmm. For a month shoot, a month and a half shoot. Mm -hmm. I just have the patience. After one month, after one, we part ways. Yes. Series, half a year, <laughs> one year. So you are, you, you, you are stuck. Yes. So your patience have to be very, very, mm -hmm. you, you have to stretch it. Yes. You have to stretch your resilience. You have to stretch, your forgiveness has to be very, very, you have to have a big heart. Mm -hmm. To forgive a lot yeah because like we say we will keep making mistakes mm. people make mistakes people smash other stools knowingly and unknowingly true yeah and as a director the moment you are off balance the whole team is off balance, off balance. You, you spoke about something you spoke about um instructing society with our pain yeah you even give an example of uh, watching the film at uh, a cinema hall and changing the narrative of how people think on certain subjects. And now, mm, we've had cries on the limitations the audience face in assessing Cameroonian movies. Uh, we're talking about streaming platforms, TV stations that are dedicated to streaming movies. Yeah. yeah what, what's, what's your take on that? What do you think we need to do? I just think we need business people to get into this... Uh side of it and create more sustainable platforms yeah because you agree that most of the consumers are actually people that are interested in movie making for example when they talk about film room the first people that know about it are people who are interested in movie making yes. but we might definitely come to a point where we want that somebody gets up puts on the tv and then a channel is showing Karenian movies and he's like oh yeah i think uh, that's why i say we really need uh, business people mm -hmm. to get into that side yes of filmmaking to be maybe distributors to own these platforms to own uh, these uh, uh, online platforms and stuff like that mm -hmm. and the truth is owning these platforms if you are a businessman definitely it's not for filmmakers yeah okay we don't do films for us filmmakers filmmakers don't do film films for, for, for themselves yeah we do films for, every for other the audience person. yes so the business should be throwing light on other people yeah that would that would be a very expensive uh venture do you think so because that is why that is why i didn't say filmmakers should get into that part of it i said business people should get into that part of it mm -hmm. because a businessman will kind of like okay he will do his SWOT analysis mm -hmm. a businessman will kind of like okay if this and this if this and this add up if this and this don't add up yes i'll feel if this and this add up i'll make it yes so, like for example, before these mobile network operators launched their activities, mm -hmm. they had to do feasibility studies. studies yeah. If this will work, if this will not work, and it worked. So these businessmen have to come in, do feasibility studies, mm -hmm. and it will work. I trust that it will work, because Cameroonians love films. Oh, they do. They love films. You see a grandma in the village. Now mm. they have their phones. They mm -hmm. are always on YouTube. Yes. Watching what? Nigerian films. And I think that the advent of the social media even makes it easier it for us to, to sell our content. It makes it very, very, very easy. Yeah, and I think it's done a lot of work for us so far. But then uh, I think there's still a lot to, to, to put in place. A, a movie maker, I was talking to a movie maker who mentioned that um, she's, she's produced a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody would want to stream it on their platform but they feel like they're, they're doing her a favor by streaming her movie and that's why she needs to know what is good for her or what's not good for her mm -hmm. because take for instance netflix approaches me and kind of like i want to do you a favor i want to put your film on my platform <laughs> give me some money no way <laughs> no but then but then sir when we're talking about uh, promoting cinema within cameron okay within cameron yes we I know the truth is yes. let's 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 be factual yes producers go through a lot Mm -hmm. to make films yes and you the owner of that platform you are using his or her film because you want relevance yes 
so you cannot even say you're doing her a favor. Exactly. No. It's just like somebody moves up to me, Scott, I want you to direct my film because I'll submit my film to Toronto International Film Festival so that you'll be known. Mm. Let them not know me. Do you, do you think there can be a, a structure or we, we can devise some mechanism to regulate that? Something, I know you, we might be talking about the actors, the guilds, mm -hmm. but then uh, do you think we can, there can be a form of structure that regulates and protects uh, uh, producers when it comes to selling their products? I think uh, the only thing that can regulate a producer from selling their product well or not well is the producer. Themselves? Yeah, you decide that. One the case where you is don't find the market in Cameroon. And then you just sit somewhere and cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The truth is, in Cameroon, it's difficult to sell. Let's be real. Yes. <laughs> Who do you want to sell to? But, but then the people want to watch. <laughs> but people don't want to buy. You oh. did the movie, we, you didn't do it, you didn't beg the technicians to mm -hmm. come shoot the movie. <laughs> you didn't do, I beg to the, uh, to the actors to come do the movies. You spent yeah. money. Yeah. Probably it's possible that people invested in that movie. Mm -hmm. So if I invest in your movie, and then I see the movie in another person's platform, yes. I know you are cheating me. Yeah. So it's prison for the producer. Mm. These business people need to see it that way. Yes. They need to make their money. Some even come up to you, they propose, I will give you one million for your product, two million. What are you using it to do? Just take lodging, lodging for a film. Let's say you want to lodge 35 people for three weeks, for two weeks. Do the math. Yeah, that's, that's heavy. Yes, it's heavy. And then you don't lodge without feeding. Yeah. You don't lodge and feed without transporting. You don't lodge, feed, transport without paying them fees. Hmm. There is a lot in filmmaking. Yeah. So if these business people are coming in, they need to have asked questions. Yeah. They need to have done their, 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 their feasibility studies to know if, this, if they really want to do this business. If they don't want to do the business, there are, there are a million other businesses they can do. What about passion? <laughs> no, 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 no. It shouldn't be always about passion. About passion. Yeah. passion can actually drown you. Exactly. Passion has drowned a lot of talent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and that, that comes back to what we were saying that if you're investing, if you want to venture into movie making and you're thinking that I'm picking this as a career, of course, you definitely not think about just the artistic part of it or the passion. You definitely have to think of it as a businessman. So every good movie maker, every good filmmaker must definitely be a, good, a businessman. So before we go, sir, um, let's talk about your other aspirations that we are not aware of. You said you're hungry for a lot of things yeah. aside um all the endeavors and the reason why you came to Yaoundé. Tell us, are there any other things that we should be looking out for when it comes to director Anna John Scott? I think I would rather want to announce them yeah. than tell them. Okay. Yeah, but definitely I've learned uh, that if your dreams are not very scary, then you are yet to dream. Hmm. Yeah, I have, I have big, big, big aspirations. Yes. But now I just want to limit it to the film circles. Mm -hmm. And the next thing in my in my on my plate would definitely be Ajay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, from the way things are going, I think uh, that will be what I'm, I'll be doing immediately. I come back from the international writing program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be going on set. Yes, for Ajay. Yeah. Do, do you have maybe an opening or a platform where you 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 instruct or help to mentor young directors who are looking up to you? Uh, I don't have right now. I just do one on one. Okay. I just do one so if on anyone one. is interested, I've seen a director actually giving credit to you for his career. Mm, yeah, mm -hmm. I've done a lot of one on ones. I do a lot of uh, personal talks. Yeah. But definitely, it is in my plans too. Beautiful. When I come back, I'll be doing some uh, master classes. Yeah. Master classes not only in directing, even in acting. Oh, wow. Yeah, because the truth is, we did a lot of master classes. No, no, let's Even talk about the directors. How do you find them? I mean... The actors. Yes. Every, yeah. They're looking forward to, to hearing your opinion on how... Yeah, I think uh, we still have a lot of mediocre acting. Yes. In the Cameroon film industry. Mm -hmm. And the kind of industry that I personally visualize is that kind of an industry where an actor or a filmmaker knows that, is convinced that... Yes. Acting is 80% work and 20% leisure. Hmm. 
A lot exactly. of our actors think it is a platform to twenty percent. Yes, to work enjoy yourself and eighty percent leisure. Mm. Actors come on set and try to pick their lines on set. Yeah, that's horrible, funny, unprofessional. Actors come on set; they don't even have a clue about the background story of, of the, the character they are playing. They focus on just what that's they have to say. That's why an actor can come on set and keeps playing John Scott, whereas in that script he is Joseph. Yeah. He's strange to Joseph. He's a stranger. And when you're a stranger to Joseph, the audience will keep seeing John Scott instead of Joseph. And that, that's maybe what uh, the audience do not know, that, that you, you started off as an actor. So mm, you've had yeah. this small experience in acting. I started off as an actor, but that's not what gave me the experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I learned a lot. Oh, right. I knew to be a boss director, you need to master acting. And every bit of movie making. Yes. So that you don't be a director who does resort directing. Right. There is something, it's in our terminology, yes, they call yes. it resort directing. Where we are, you are directing, I say, no, no, I want you to shout more. That's mm -hmm. resort directing. It's just coming from out here. Mm. Go to the source. Because there is something in the source. Mm. A lot of our actors have not hit 30% of their potential. Wow. A few are there. Yes. A few are there. That's why it, it, it is strenuous more to directors like myself because like when I go on set and yeah. I have to work with this actor, I see myself oozing out more energy because I have to act as a director and an, an actor. acting coach. Okay. That's not the duty of a director. So mm. I'll be doing a lot of master classes. Okay. On Watch that. out. I'll be doing a lot of master classes on directing, on acting, on writing. Especially. I'm excited. Okay. Especially on directing, acting and <laughs> and writing. <laughs> I really want to get new things from this journey I'm going yeah. to. So this will definitely be beneficial to, to the entire Cameroon, not only to to your career as a director. Definitely. So, so before, before we go, any last word for uh, your audience, your fans, aspiring movie makers who are looking up to you as a model? Yeah, I think what I will have to tell them is uh, they have to be very, 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 very conscious. It is not an easy journey. Mm. When you have the consciousness that this journey is not easy, you will easily make it. But when you are not conscious that it is a difficult journey, then when the slightest difficulty comes, you might give up. Mm. Like I was not conscious it was going to be this difficult. So a lot of times I tried giving up. Research. Do your best. Focus. Be true to it. Consistent. Mm -hmm. Even if you keep doing one, if you keep failing, if you keep failing at it, I think the most successful people are those that have failed more times. And then they use their failures in a valuable way. Just be tenacious. Keep doing your best and above everything. This is my sincere counsel to you. Make Jesus your life savior important. I think that's my personal secret, the Holy Spirit in me. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Amen. It was a beautiful one. And that was the legendary Anna John Scott. We did have a deep and an insightful moment with him. Thank you so much, sir, for everything, for your contributions to the growth of the industry, for taking our time to come to Hollywood TV, for your humility, for making yourself available to anything film. We we're so blessed by your presence. And guys, we would be answering all your questions at the comment section. Every question that you have, he is going to leave a response and we are going to make sure that we relate that to you at the comment section. And until we see you again next Sunday, it's bye from me and the entire Hollywood team. Ciao.